Good day to you and welcome on the conversation. And well, I know that plenty of you are looking for new laptops. I get this regularly. People on my channel uh, sometimes just comment and want to help with a proper choice of their laptop. They are just looking for something, and very often they know somewhat what they're looking for, but they are lo not looking for the best deals currently. They have this laptop in their mind, and there is something better for $50. And that's where I come in very often. But I also know that there is a regular problem in this choice. And that is whether to choose integrated graphics or actually buy a laptop with dedicated graphics. And well, that's why I'm here today. So I have a list of my tests. A few tests that I did over the years um, that I've been doing this. I have more games on this channel of course, but these are the ones where I actually tested even 1080p and high preset, because very often on the integrated graphics you don't even have to test it. Why would I show that it has 5 FPS when on 720p it actually has 18, so it is close to unplayable. But in here we have 4 games in the uh, medium presets, high presets, and actually 6 games in the low preset. That is to show the differences between modern games and actual online well-optimized games that can run almost on the potatoes, such as League of Legends. So, let's take a look at the lowest preset. The orange one, the orange color, uh, sorry, the orange numbers mean that they are locked. So Hearthstone, for example, locks itself on low and medium on 30 FPS. It doesn't allow you more. That's why on high preset you can actually see the difference where it drops on the 720p, uh, but the dedicated graphics is still maxed. But on 1080p, the dedicated graphics is also not locked as it uh, went down below 60 and is and 55 and the integrated graphics went down to 19. I should point out what, that 940M, so NVIDIA, is the green team and Intel HD 520 is the blue team. Of course, if you want a laptop for running games such as League of Legends, you can see that you can get pretty high FPS even at 1080p if you lose if you use lower presets or medium preset. The medium preset the integrated graphics got on average 71 with some fights dropping significantly below 60 but with dedicated graphics you will never drop below 60 even at highest preset 1080p which is pretty good in general. Also using your integrated graphics actually stresses your RAM and stresses your CPU more. That's what I found out in general, that the CPU usage gets higher and higher with that. So if you're looking for something like 6200U and with only integrated graphics or uh, let's say i3 processors, you will get significantly better results with the DKA graphics because it will take off some of the tr uh, strain from the processor. That's what I found out when testing Hearthstone for example, because at the 1080p and high preset uh, with the or with the dedicated graphics in general, my usage of GPU actually went up to 70%, but my CPU usage was lower than with the low uh, was almost lower than with the lowest preset. Simply because the GPU gets more work to do and CPU just pushes it towards the GPU. Which also means that the laptop in general is running up more smoothly. For example, if you're playing something and you want to watch, uh, if you have two screens and you want to watch a video with it on the other side, that's what, uh, what I'm doing with card games because there is always your opponent's turn. Well, at that point within, with the integrated graphics only, what I sometimes get is video stutter. Because th uh, the system actually puts uh, all the resources towards the game as it is uh, prioritized, but the video itself gets this weird stutter and uh, slowing down video, but uh, the audio goes on, and that is not pleasant. 
Of course, sometimes I even get issues with uh, 1080p videos if they are pretty large. If they are not, what is it, comprised? I think so. Well, if you don't really lower the size and have full HD, but I mean real full HD, which has like 8 to 16 gigs, then, well, the integrated graphics does not really manage that for some reason. Even though uh, the Intel tells us that it should, it doesn't and I have to run the dedicated graphics in order to put it correctly. Of course, if you are thinking about getting a larger monitor such as um, 1440p, for these videos you definitely need dedicated graphics instead of the integrated one. But back to the gaming. You can see that with the potato games, which is like CSGO, which is like League of Legends, the cards, the integrated graphics actually work pretty well, because they are older games. All these games that are in there are at least four or five years old already, and uh, they are running so that everyone can run them. However, a good example of those old games more modern, well, you cannot run with integrated graphics properly, are Pillars of Eternity and Warhammer to, or Total War Warhammer. Total Warhammer is only with the lowest preset and you can see that once you put it on 1080p even the dedicated graphics has trouble with it. But at 21 FPS it is on the verge of playable, at least because you can pause it. However, once you go below 19 you have extremely visible tearing. And that's the problem of the dedicated graphics there, or integrated graphics there, sorry. It does not really work. Even at the lowest preset, even at 720p, where your dedicated graphics get, gets amazing 337 uh, FPS, so it's really well playable, uh, the integrated one gets only 18. Which means that there is 100% difference extra over that, which says a lot. And if you take a look at uh, Pillars of Eternity, which is a somewhat CPU-heavy game, then you can see that that's the case where the, the CPU, uh, where the CPU actually wants to put the most load on GPU, the most it can, because even at the integrated graphics you get 14 at the 720p and lowest preset, but on dedicated you get 39. At 1080p, it is completely, completely unplayable because it has only 8 FPS. However, with the dedicated, it has 27. That's. Uh, what's that? Three and a half times difference? Or sorry, two and a half times, well, 250% extra over that? That is. pretty neat. And that's a pretty significant difference. Because if you take a look at the high preset in 1080p, I wouldn't say that it's really, like, enjoyable even a dedicated graphics at those 20 fps but 5 fps you don't want to play that and that just showcases that if you are a really really okay if you're a player who is really focusing just on low games such as or low or lower resource games such as league of legends and you really think that in the last in the next four years, the only game that you will be playing is going to be League of Legends, then, well, yeah, that's probably good for good enough for you. But if you're thinking about other games and like, I want to try this RPG and I want to try other MOBAs, such as Dota 2, which you can see in the 7, uh, 720 lowest preset, has actually 75 FPS on the dedicated, but only 33 on the integrated, that means that once you actually put it onto a laptop which is a native 1080p and you would like to play on a native 1080p, you will have a somewhat hard time reaching stable 30 in team fights, which is where it matters. However, with the dedicated graphics, you will be completely okay even in fights. And that's really, really the problem. Because if you are 100% 100, 100 sure that you will still be an enthusiast gamer, but um, somewhat enthusiast gamer, but you will be playing only that one game that actually is able to run 
on the, on the system with only integrated graphics, then yeah. Otherwise, come on, this this preset that I have, which is i5-6200U, dedicated graphics, 8 gigs of RAM, um, standard stock hard drive, it can barely, barely run Witcher 3 at 720p and the lowest presets. I can actually get like 28 FPS if I change things outside of the in-game settings in the Hunter's Config. And it doesn't suck like in the way it actually looks afterwards, but it is somewhat unpleasant to change these things. And still it is somewhat unpleasant to go into fights in a game which is about fluidity of combat and have only 23 to 25. With the integrated graphics, you get like 10. You get like 8. And that means that this is in the modern games right now. In 5 years, or let's say that your laptop will last only 3 years. In 3 years, you, the games will run like 5 FPS on the, on the integrated. And majority of them will be able to get 25 on the dedicated graphics. Because some of them, of course, will be much more demanding. But hey, this can play even Dark Souls 3, even though not well, it can. But not on the integrated one. On the integrated RAM 1 you have a hard time actually playing Dark Souls 2. So what I wanted to say with this, really, is that if you are thinking of yourself as a somewhat enthusiast gamer, but you just don't have the means, or not means really, uh, you just need to have a laptop and not just a desktop, then definitely go for the dedicated graphics. Even if you think that uh, League of Legends is your life, you probably might find out that you want to play some daily stuff, that you want to do something else, or you just want to have those extra FPS in those team fights. And that's really when it when it gets important in general. So the more effects you get, the more the more stuff the more stuff on the screen the more stressed your PC will be and the sig more significant difference there will be in the game gameplay itself. Don't ever forget that even games like League of Legends, like Dota, like CSGO actually change over time. League of Legends has changed its visuals significantly since, since its release. And if it looked like it looked in 2008, 2009, the integrated graphics would be able to push it to 120, but they are still changing even that. So with another update, visual one, you might actually have to lower from your high, uh, from your medium preset to your low preset, just to find out that you hate the way the game looks now, but it is the only way you can run it. I hope that this helps you a bit around like what whether to choose dedicated graphics in your laptops or not. Of course, it is great to take a look at those, and I wouldn't probably recommend you choosing something like nine, uh, yeah, 900, uh, 920MX, because it's just a bit more, or just a bit stronger than the HD 520, but it can help with the strain. But at the same price point, you can usually get 930MX or 940. And uh, if you have to choose, Probably 940, 940MX is fine. Then, th at that point, you are around $600, $650 very often, which is a nice price. And the 1050 laptops don't go for 950M, once the, uh, because there are 10, uh, 1050 right now. And these 1050s, they usually start at around eight to $900. So I understand that people don't have the $200 extra. And if you have those $200 extra, maybe buy a desktop and buy a crappy laptop. Buy a tablet with a, with a keyboard for 200 bucks and use it just on the go. It, it can have dual boot. So that's also an option. I'm myself right now in the process of buying slowly the new desktop. But um, really, take a look at those integrated graphics results and think think for yourself is this worth it does this have the longevity because i don't believe it does
Well, hope that this helps you decide which laptops to get actually. And well, thanks for watching and see you next time. Thank <music> you.